Good news, everybody. Pernak here, and I'm bringing to you another episode of Paper School. So let's dive in and talk about paper. All right, today's lesson is going to be on the three different types of paper we have. You have handmade paper, mold-made paper, and machine-made paper. And now we're going to discuss what makes each one different and superior or inferior to other papers. So let's dive right in and do this, right? All right, the first paper I want to talk about is handmade paper. It's the oldest style of paper on the market. Uh, it is made by hand. It's made by artisans and things like that. It is typically made very traditionally, which means they take a big tub of water and then they also add to it the paper fibers and they mix it up and it becomes what they call a slurry of water and fiber. And then they take a, uh, they call it a decal, which kind of looks like a window screen, dip it into the water and then lift it up. And then the paper fibers sit on top of that screen. Those fibers are then flipped over and then deposited normally into what most places use is a felt or some other kind of really thick cloth and then the papers are, you know, one is put on top of the other and that's how they do them. And you can kind of see a picture of that right here. You can see the tub and that right here is the decal. Those strings are just there to help kind of support the decal and make the paper making go a little faster. Now, what are the benefits of handmade paper? One, it has virtually almost no paper grain. Now, you can probably find a paper grain on it, but it has almost no paper grain. Often, most handmade papers are also, especially because most of them are Japanese, especially Aogami is one of the fine producers of these papers. These are great papers, and as I said, they're all handmade. And what makes Another benefit of them is many of them can be made very thin. Uh, one of the most popular papers, let's see here, I got a bunch of them here. I got little samples, I got all these little samples from uh, Aragami that I had gotten when I worked at Daniel Smith. That one's on, uh, do, 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 nope, nope, no. I'm trying to find them. Uh, but the one I know is the most popular is Kitakata. And that is one of the most popular printmaking papers on the market. A lot of people really like that one. It prints beautifully. It's just, it's just a really nice paper. Um, okay, the second type of paper I want to talk about is mold made paper and its benefits versus handmade paper. So it's made on a giant cylinder mold. It's basically a sc giant screen, a giant round decal that churns through the slurry of water. And as it churns, it picks up the paper and then drops it off and then can deposit it onto the conveyor, which then, you know, does the whole thing. So. It's a, made on a machine, which is going to be different than machine-made paper because it's still a mold. It's being deposited, the fibers are being deposited onto a basically a rounded decal, a cylindrical decal, and then put onto conveyor belt. So what are the benefits of mold-made paper? Well, the first benefit is it's a lot less expensive than handmade. So it's typically about half the cost of handmade papers. Um, I know some of my mold made papers, I really love them, but they are less expensive than my handmade ones. I try not to buy handmade papers, even though I love things like Kitakata, but they are more expensive than mold made papers. The second benefit is most mold made papers, they kind of mimic your handmade papers a little bit more. So you can kind of get more of a handmade feel at a more mass produced price, but it's still, so it's less expensive than handmade. The 
third benefit is that because it's being made on a giant cylinder and it gets deposited and you know the way you can look it up on other videos on YouTube of how they make the paper and things like that um, but you can get really 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 long sheets of paper for until you run out of your slurry mixture so if you just keep adding slurry you can make a really long roll of really big roll of paper um, which is kind of nice because you can make larger sheets more inexpensively yeah and plus you can also especially in the case of some of these mold made papers you can have rolls of it so you can have like a 50 inch roll you know 50 inches wide and just you know they're normally like 10 yards 10 meters long and you can even get them bigger than that i have seen a big 50 yard roll rolls of some of these things now what's the downside because it's made on a machine you do get a slight paper grain to it and that is really the downside to uh, mold made papers and how does paper grain affect us it for printmakers it doesn't we really don't need to worry about it it's more for book binders or anytime you're going to fold paper uh, because grain directions dictate which way paper will fold the best so you do have a slight grain direction so let's talk about what some good brands because i talked about handmade origami is really good and they are one of the best names in handmade papers and the largest name in handmade paper um, second one would be let's talk about the major paper mills uh, so you have arches which is most people in America call it Arches paper um, and Reeves which is very uh, which I believe is owned by Arches if I remember correctly or it's affiliated with it I can't remember or it might just be a certain mill that's owned by the same conglomerate I can't really remember the whole distinction there and those are both made in France and then you have Somerset which is made in England and then you have uh, Fabriano, which is Italian, you can tell by the name, and Mignani, which is also Italian and made, uh, made over in Italy. They are some of my favorite papers, uh, mold made papers. In fact, probably the best, when I worked at Daniel Smith, our best selling paper by far was this right here can't really see it but it is a mold made paper and this is Reeves BFK I don't know if you can see the watermark here you cannot and that's also another benefit of mold made paper is you can have watermarks on it because they put a little emblem right onto the um, mold and as it turns it just puts it out at even consistencies all the time so you can mark your paper and that's the other thing I, I didn't mention. Um, handmade paper normally has decals, which you can kind of see here, the decal, come on, right there. Um, and if you really look closely at these, it's a little bit thinner here. So mold made papers can have a decal on two sides, which is what's nice about them. And then they're normally torn along the other side or cut. Um, with a, you know, they call them paper knives. They're these big, long, giant knives that you just, you know, you know, run along the edge there. But, you know, I mean, you can get a deco look on two sides of your paper, which is the other nice thing about mold-made paper. Unlike handmade paper, which has four decals, or most likely will have four decals. But, you know, that's the nice thing about mold made paper is it's very versatile it mimics many of the things of handmade paper but it's made a lot less inexpensively all right the third and final paper we're going to talk about is machine made paper now machine made paper is probably the most popular paper on the planet everything uh, many papers are made on it and this includes things like toilet paper uh, Paper towels are machine-made papers. Um, printer paper is, you know, machine-made. And there are very many fine art papers that are machine-made. 
Now, what is the benefit of machine-made paper? Despite everything, you can get very, while well, most people think of machine-made paper as very inexpensive and cheap, that is not always the case. You can have very high-end mold-made, or very high-end machine-made papers. Uh, the major benefit is it's because it's a machine and it's just continuously runs, it can spit out lots of paper very quickly, very inexpensively. So machine-made papers are very inexpensive. Many uh, fine art papers that you will see that are machine-made are made by Strathmore. They make a huge number of machine-made papers and they're very high-end and they use cotton and many of their higher-end papers. But that's not thing. I mean, that's not really what it is. That's important about it. It's just because it's machine made doesn't mean it's junk paper. It just means it's made more inexpen inexpensively. Uh, my favorite machine made paper is this one. It's Stonehenge, right here. I love Stonehenge. I use it all the time. I love it mostly because um, it has a texture to it. Let's see. If see that you can kind of see the slight texture to it there um, it definitely has an A side and a B side most most machine made paper does have a distinct A side and B side too that's uh, another whether it's a benefit or non benefit uh, it's really hard to say on that one um, but like I said Stonehenge is my most favorite paper it is our when I worked at Daniel Smith it was the second most popular paper we sold mostly because it was half the price of every other paper that we had I mean it was half the price of BFK which was basically half the price of like most of your Japanese papers so um, but the downside to it it's got a distinct paper grain and it, they're very noticeable and you have to pay attention so how does that matter like I said it doesn't matter to your standard printmaker it matters to anyone using it for book binding or anything you're going to involve folding the paper that's the major downside is very 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 distinct paper grain um, some papers like Stonehenge like if you get the large sheets of it they have a man-made decal on it and then you can still tear the paper and it tears very nicely it's got a like little bit of a rough edge to it um but yeah that's really what it is, is machine made paper is by far the most popular paper on the market you can have very high-end fine machine made papers depending on what they use to make them that's what it comes down to is what they use to make them because most mold made papers and handmade papers are meant to be used for archival purposes or for artists so they are typically archival acid free type papers for things like that machine made not all of it is most of it uses a lot of uh, especially things like newsprint for newspaper um, and not always acid free but Stonehenge many of the Strathmore's and other fine art papers that you know and drawing papers are acid free it's just paying attention to which ones are which, you know. You just have to do a little research when you buy paper if you want to use it for anything. But, yeah, that's the major difference. Very discernible paper green from machine made, but very, very, very inexpensive compared to all the other processes. All right, everyone, let's do our pros and cons so we can do our wrap-up here. So, handmade paper, pros of that. Well, one of the pros is you can get really thin paper that's very strong and sturdy. You can also have your decals on it, which is what's very nice about it. You can get those little deckled edges uh, because of the decal. And you can even put watermarks on it if you so choose to. The other benefit is virtually almost no um, paper grain. That's what I had to think of there. I just couldn't think of the word. But you have almost no paper grain. The downside is, it's really it's just expensive. That is the major downside to most of the handmade papers. Is they're normally very expensive compared to all the other papers. So, and then let's do our pros and cons for the mold made. So the pro is, it's less expensive than handmade. 
Uh, it simulates a lot of the handmade, and you can get very many things that are very handmade-like with the papers, um, which is one of the benefits of it. Uh, so you get handmade quality at a fraction of the price. You can also get really big sheets because it's a lot less inexpensive to make big sheets. And you also get really big rolls of paper if, you're, if you want to do some big prints or something or any big artwork. Uh, so you can get big paper. That's another benefit of it. Uh, really the only downside is it's got a noticeable paper grain. Um, so for those of you who want to use it for book binding or for anything with paper arts that include folding, origamis, things like that, it can be a little hinky sometimes. It's just, you know, it may not be the best. You have to work around the paper grain. It doesn't stop you from using the paper for book binding or anything like that. It's just you have to take it into a planning of your books and your folding and all that kind of things. Finally, we have machine made paper. The major pros of it, it's inexpensive compared to even mold made paper. It's typically about half the price of mold made papers. Um, and most of it doesn't have a decal. You can't get a natural decal with mold made papers, or I mean with machine made papers. Um, Stonehenge does have decals on it, and there's a few other machine made papers that have decals, but they're not real decals. They're just you know shaped paper they shape that uh the other downside is it has a very 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 noticeable grain direction and for those of you who are doing book arts or paper arts where folding is important you need to pay a very close attention to it before i dismiss you i just want to remind you click on that subscribe button down below uh help me build up a fan base tell people about it uh, if you have any questions, please talk to me. I like to hear from people. So uh, if you have any questions, comment down below. Uh, also, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr. My links are up above. And finally, if you're interested in purchasing any prints from me, you can do so at my Etsy shop. All right, guys. Class dismissed.